jobs rebounding in a big way. 321,000 new ones created last month. But some here say that could be over, thanks to the administration's new rule on how companies pay overtime. Gary B., what's it mean? Brenda, it's going to mean less jobs. Look, every time the government meddles, it meddles with the free market. You know, businesses small and large are ruthlessly efficient at, at turning out the most profit they can for the least amount of cost. So when the government comes in, whether it's the, um, the mileage uh, regulations, uh, standards for the auto industry, or it's, uh, it's uh, pollution standards for the coal industry, or it's this new one uh, determining uh, who's a manager and who's not, resulting in more overtime pay, it's like a big tax on businesses. Brenda, when you have more tax on businesses, they make less profit. They make less profit. That's less money for them to put back into the business, open up new businesses, and hire people. So anytime you see one of these laws comes down, it's going to result in less employment than there would be if the market was allowed to operate freely. Jessica, how does this not hurt the labor market? This is simply fixing a loophole issue. It's actually very simple. There has only been a raise in the income level to be considered a manager twice in the last 40 years. So currently only 12% of employees are eligible to get overtime based on the current system. And in 1975, it was 65%. So all it is is fixing an inequality oh, well, that exists because it has not been addressed in 40 years. Okay. But, but John, Shouldn't businesses be determining what to pay their workers instead of the government telling us from a, a law that was during the Great Depression? Yeah, it was in 1938. It was dealt. Uh, it was done to dealt with a factory and manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a reason it hadn't been updated. It's outdated. It should be just taken off the books completely. Look, there's nobody at home in the White House. Everybody's left that is a grown up to either start their own business, uh, go to private enterprise, or run for their own political office themselves. So you have a president there who just who doesn't know what to do. So you, you're not going to get any tax reform done. You're not going to get any energy policy done. The only thing you're going to be able to do to, to divide that gap that's uh, of inequality that has grown significantly in his president he wants to make the the rich poorer instead of making the poor richer and that is exactly what he's doing here it, it is this is a, a disaster for small businesses jonas what do you think well it was taken off the books under the bush administration we're kind of what obama wants to do is undo that the problem is this fdr policy is at least five years too late we have a sub six percent unemployment rate back in 1938 we had a double digit unemployment rate it makes sense to do this it doesn't enrich the worker it means an employer has to hire three people to do the work of two people they're not going to pay the three more they're just going to have to hire more people it, it does manufacture a lower unemployment rate which is why that's not a goal but it Getting back to Gary's point, this isn't a great policy necessarily right. because that's what Europe does, and that's why our unemployment rate skyrocketed in the last recession, but then fell very fast. In countries like France, it barely went up, right. but, but it's never going down is, either because you can't have that flexibility with go your ahead, workforce. The problem with this is it's supposed to kick in in February. So what am I going to do between now and February? Nothing. I'm going to sit on my butt because that, and oh, by the way, there were 3,400 uh, new regulations dropped before Thanksgiving. Tackle that on to what I'm going to have to pay for Obamacare. You know what that means? I'm not going to hire because who the heck knows what's going to come down in March or April or whenever else the wind blows and the administration decides to throw some regulation on small businesses. The National Federation of Independent Businesses polls small businesses and they say the number one biggest problem, regulations and red tape. That is halting job growth in this country. All right. Thanks, guys. Cashing in just over an hour from now. Eric, what do you guys have coming up? Hi, Brenda. The protests against police continue from coast to coast, and now the president wants to spend millions arming them with body cams. But does this takedown caught on tape prove it would be a waste of time and money? Cashing in, never a waste of your time. See you at 1130. That's for sure. Thanks, Eric. We'll be watching. But up here first, most college kids taking a fifth year victory lap before finally earning that degree. Time for parents to give them the third degree?